everybody welcome to edupedia world my name is mansi kar and we will be studying geography today so a topic for today will be the hydrosphere you all must be knowing that the earth appears blue when viewed from outer space this is because approximately 71% of the earth is covered in water hydrosphere refers to the combined mass of water found on the earth such as in oceans rivers streams lakes and in the atmosphere and also the underground water the mean depth of the hydrosphere which includes lakes is 3800 meters and it is five times the mean height of the land which is 710 meters well one of the main sources of water on the earth is ocean Throughout history humans have been directly or indirectly influenced by the oceans About 97% of the earth's water supply is in the oceans which is unfit for human consumption and other uses due to its high salt content This water is called saline water As you can also see on your screens out of the remaining 3% About 68.7% is locked in ice caps and glaciers which is not directly available to us and groundwater constitutes about 30.1%. Well, the rest of 0.9% is available to us as fresh water in rivers, lakes, streams and swamps. Thereby we can see that we have a very limited stock of usable water available to us for day to day activity while most people never venture far beyond the coast the open ocean provides a range of goods and services that are an integral part of our health economies weather and even our lives some of these goods and services include fisheries increasingly people are turning to the oceans for their food supply either by direct consumption or by indirectly harvesting fish that is then processed for livestock feed it has been estimated that as much as 10% of human protein intake comes from the oceans marine fisheries have traditionally been located near the coast both because this requires simpler technology and because coastal waters are much more productive than the open sea well coming on to the second impact or the importance of oceans are the shipping routes the oceans provide convenient transport routes which we take full advantage of around 90% of all trade between countries is carried by ships these transport everything from food and fuel to construction materials chemicals and household items you must have also heard about the famous suez canal that is a gateway of many important shipping and trading routes in the world jumping on to the next important thing that oceans provide us is oxygen you must have all heard about phytoplankton which are single celled organisms of lakes streams and oceans that make their own food from sunlight through photosynthesis so It's commonly known that plants are the foundation for any kind of terrestrial ecosystem. As primary producers, plants use the process of photosynthesis to turn sunlight into food that is then usable for the other animals. Phytoplankton are one of the most common primary producers for aquatic ecosystems that form the basis of many aquatic food chains. These tiny single cell photosynthetic marine plants are estimated to produce over half the oxygen that we and all other land animals breathe. So you see these marine plants called phytoplankton are also one of the major oxygen producers found in the oceans. Well, the importance of oceans does not end here. They have many other roles. such as carbon dioxide sinks carbon dioxide readily dissolves in water and the oceans provide a huge reservoir of carbon across the world's oceans there is a continual cycle of equilibrium of dissolved carbon dioxide in water with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere 
around 88,000 million tons of carbon is released from the surface of the world's oceans each year with an annual uptake by the oceans of 90,000 million tons. Consequently, the net uptake of carbon dioxide by oceans is estimated to be approximately 2,000 million tons annually. The carbon dioxide which dissolves in our oceans occurs in three main forms. Aside from the normal carbon dioxide form, it is also found as bicarbonate and carbonate ions. Most, about 90%, exists as bicarbonate with carbonate ions acting as a link between the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate. Ocean waters have the capacity to absorb vast amounts of greenhouse warming gas carbon dioxide and thus have helped to buffer human-caused global warming and climate change. Indeed, nearly half of the CO2 produced by human activities in the last 2000 years has dissolved in the ocean. Phytoplanktons also lock carbon dioxide away. Like land plants, these microscopic algae use carbon dioxide to grow. When they die, the carbon dioxide sinks as an organic matter to the bottom of the ocean, keeping it out of the atmosphere. Also, the phytoplankton use carbonate to produce its limestone protection. The carbonate is obtained from the atmospheric carbon dioxide that gets dissolved into the ocean water. These planktons use those carbonate ions for their limestone protection and when they die, they sink to the bottom of the ocean and the carbon storage happen by sedimentation. So as a result, we see the buffering action of the oceans have helped a lot to maintain the oxygen and carbon dioxide balance of the earth. Oceans produce about 50% of the oxygen that we breathe and they absorb about roughly a quarter of our CO2 emissions. This CO2 would otherwise have been accumulated in the atmosphere leading to greater climate change. However, the absorption of the CO2 has affected ocean chemistry. The oceans, which should be slightly alkaline, have turned more acidic due to the increased carbon emissions caused by major human activities like deforestation, industrial revolution, etc. The average pH of the oceanic surface waters has been lowered by 0.1 units since the pre-industrial period. Still, we should be thankful for the buffering action of oceans. Otherwise, in today's scenario, the global warming that we experience would have been increased tenfold. Coming on to yet another important aspect of oceans, they do provide us with temperature and weather control. The surface layer of the ocean absorbs over half the heat, reaching the earth from the sun. By distributing this heat around the world, ocean currents, which flow for thousands of kilometers, both at the surface and far below, are extremely important in determining the climate of the world's continents. For example, the Gulf Stream carries warm water from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the Western Europe. This water warms the air above, which is then blown across to the land. As a result, Northwest Europe is much warmer than the other lands at the same latitude. Hurricanes and cyclones can be destructive when they hit land, but these tropical storms also help to distribute heat from the tropics to higher latitudes through the atmosphere. Yet another factor is the water cycle. The oceans are also an integral part of the water cycle. Vast amounts of water evaporate from the ocean surface, rising into the atmosphere as water vapor. And when this water vapor collides with colder air, it condenses to form clouds and rains. There are many other uses of oceans also, such as for recreational use. Each year, more people are getting attracted to the sports of swimming, fishing, scuba diving, boating and water skiing. Ocean water is processed to extract commercially valuable minerals such as salt, bromine and magnesium. Other biological products of the oceans are also commercially used. For example, pearls taken from oysters are widely used in jewelry and shells and corals have been used as a source of building material. 
The shallow continental shelves have been exploited as a source of sands and gravel. In addition, extensive deposits of petroleum bearing sands have been exploited in offshore areas, particularly along the Gulf of California and the Persian Gulf. Now let us discuss some of the landforms found near oceans. As you can already see on your screens, there are many landforms like islands, capes, bay, peninsula, delta, gulf, etc. Let us discuss the main landforms. Firstly, an isthmus. What is an isthmus? Isthmus is a narrow strip of land that is bordered on the two sides by water and connects two larger land masses. Now straight, it is a narrow channel of water which connects two large water areas. Do not get confused between a strait and an isthmus. They both have a similar definition. So, to clear your confusion, see the comparison between the two. An isthmus, shown in orange in the first picture from the left, is a thin strip of land connecting two larger land masses, while straight is a thin strip of water connecting two larger water bodies. Hope you'll remember it now. Gulf. A gulf is a large part of the ocean or sea that is partly enclosed by land. Well, a bay is similar to a gulf but it is generally smaller than a gulf. It is also a part of the sea extending into the land. Island, I hope everybody knows what an island is. It's a land that has water on all sides. There are many islands in the world. Well, hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you and have a nice day.